All right, the sheet that's going around is uh, the assignment submission form. <clears throat> Most of you have had me in this um, in the past year or so uh, when I started doing this. Um, essentially, whenever you turn in an assignment, this is how it's going to get turned in. <clears throat> um, for this project, at the end of this, we should have a movie and we should have a uh, node graph snapshot. Those are typically the two things that you're going to turn in. Um, I don't want to have your whole asset folder. You remember how big your assets were when you downloaded them last class, right? Like three gigs. Um, I don't need 60 gigs of stuff each project or plus more, right? <clears throat> so every time we turn something in, it's typically going to be a movie and a snapshot of your node graph showing how organized it is um, and this sheet, okay? And then, <clears throat> excuse me, if there's any planning that goes into it, that'll also be turned in. Um, but for each project, you'll have this. Uh, when your assignment is turned in, you'll give me this sheet, plus your stuff will be on the server. <clears throat> and then I'll go through, I'll look at all the things that we're trying to hit inside this list. I'll make sure that um, you've hit on all those things. And then I will mark up anything that you didn't do. And then I will put the grade into Canvas, and I will give you your sheet back. Okay, so that's different than last time because last time you had to hand me the sheet back afterwards. This time you won't have to do that. Um, so I'll hand it back to you if you want to make changes. Let's say um, your vignette looks weird or your coloring looks off or you didn't composite something correctly. You fix those things up. You hand back the sheet with the little checkbox here saying you're resubmitting it. Put your stuff into the server and then I can go back and regrade it and then update your grade. <coughs> Okay, any questions on that process? We'll go through it obviously when we turn in the first one, but that'll be it, okay? So this is our game station uh, composite. The due date for this will be January 23rd, which is a week from today. So that means that today, <clears throat> pretty much, and uh, a little bit of next class, we'll be finishing these things up, and then next class will actually be starting the, uh, the next assignment. Uh, we don't have too much more to do on this one, uh, today we want to get into uh, finishing touch kind of stuff. Um, so this will be, uh, the description for this will be understanding the basics of Nuke while working with 3D layer renderings. We'll be shuffling and merging nodes <clears throat> enhancing, if I can spell it right, enhancing the original uh, images, creating a movie, staying organized. That's it. Okay. Uh, if I go through this and you're like, oh, I didn't get that last line or whatever, that's fine. I print up all these and I have a purple book at the front of the desk that you could always come up to and copy at some point. Okay. Uh, for the turn ins for this, <clears throat> you'll be turning in your uh, only essentials. which in this case is going to be a movie and node graph snapshot. Okay, we'll be turning in uh, a movie, and then there's the resolution of it, 1280 by 720 at 30 frames per second. Our class number and name is 2560, compositing with After Effects and Nuke. And then this is uh, 10 possible points. And then make sure that your, <coughs> your name is on the your name area, Tara. <laughs>
Cool. I'll print that. You can copy it later if you need to. That's fine. That's why I'm printing it. All right, so this is where we left off last class with our composite. <clears throat> we went through and um, from the very beginning of it, we went through and we hit the S key down here. We went to our name. We made sure that it was named correctly. We went here to the project to make sure that was good. When you go into Nuke now and you just go to open, it should connect to the right settings here. If it doesn't, then you can hit S and then click the folder and then you should be good there. <clears throat> we also went down here and set this to be 1280 by 720. That's the size of all of our footage. We read in our um, image here. We did that layer contact sheet so we can see what all the different passes were that had it. We shuffled out the diffuse, the transmission, the coat, the specular, and the ambient occlusion, and then rejoined all those things back together. We also copied the alpha channel so that we could then put it on top of a background and then we added a glow. Now typically something like this would take five minutes, 10 minutes, once you're comfortable with the software, obviously it took us longer because of that. Um, what I want to show before we go further in the into this is the 3D side of it. Now most, uh, most of you are 3D people, some of you are not 3D people, it doesn't matter. If you're working in the industry and this is the kind of stuff that you're doing, this is the stuff that you would need to know to, to give to someone or tell someone, this is what I need to get, okay? <clears throat> so this is the 3D software. Uh, this is Maya. This is the game system right here. Oops, I clicked the wrong button. Um, these are my render settings, okay? So in 3D, <clears throat> when you render something out, you can render out just the beauty pass, which is basically what we see uh, at the start of that. Just the colors, that's all we're looking at pretty much, is just that beautiful color image. Um, to get all those other things out of it, we actually have, actually have to go through and specify all the stuff that we want to pull out of um, that image. Um, as we get into this side of it, we have a better understanding of what we need. So you'll see this, that if, if someone's doing this kind of thing and it's a different kind of project, typically they're gonna be going in there and saying, okay, now I need this to happen, now I need that to happen. <clears throat> like the screen, I needed to make sure that I had a nice clear image of the screen that I could then make glow. I needed to make sure I had a nice crystal clear uh, alpha channel so I could cut it out. Um, I also wanted to have images for the buttons so I could isolate each button and control what their color would be afterwards, okay? So inside of the software, I go through and I specify each one of those things here to say this is what I want. And then down here, I have some custom ones that I've also added into that. So you'll see, here's the diffuse, here's the direct, here is the coat, here is the wireframe, here is the Z-depth, <clears throat> um, here's the ambient occlusion. And then as I'm going through my rendering here, um, I'm previewing these and seeing what they look like and then going through and then making sure I'm getting what I need. Um, <clears throat> typically, before I would render out an entire movie of this, I would render out one frame. So this frame here that's in the middle, typically I would render out that one frame, make sure that I have everything, and then once I'm happy with it, then go back and render out the entire movie with those settings. So like we're doing here where we're working on, uh, no. uh, like we're doing here where we're working on just that middle frame, if I'm a 3D person, I would render out that middle frame, I would give it to the nuke person, they would do their stuff, this part, make sure they have everything, they say yes, it's good, I render out the movie. They say no, it's not, then I work on something else, I fix it and then send it over to them, okay? Um, so all those passes are things that I had to set up inside of here in order for that to work. Okay, and all I'm doing is I'm looking at these from a um, masking point of what do I actually have there and what can I work with. Uh, when I look at this here, I'm looking at each one of these objects saying, okay, uh, each one of these is a separate color. I can actually separate each one of these pieces once I get into Nuke. 
<clears throat> here's my diffuse. There's no brightness on it. So if I needed to adjust the coloration, I should be able to use that selection to grab the button to then change the color inside there and then drop this on top of it. Same thing there, same thing there, okay? So I'm using 3D as, uh, as my way to create all these kinds of masks. Now there was one thing that um, wasn't available inside the software which is called CryptoMat. This is CryptoMat. Now what it would do without CryptoMat, let me go here and Shuffle this out. Um, yes. Okay, so without CryptoMat, I would get something like this for my ID channel. Okay, and basically these are just colors. <clears throat> now, if I wanted to, to isolate any one of these colors, I would have to go through and do like a keying on it, like a green screen or a blue screen or whatever, and pick that specific color. Now, that could be. Um, not very smooth because if I, let's say I did a blue key, this item here is blue, this item here is blue, and that item there has some blue in it. So when I do like a blue key, it would pull out basically all three of those and that wouldn't help me out very much. With uh, CryptoMat, uh, that one I think, nope. Well, I guess it was that one. It's weird that it's showing all of it, but whatever. Uh, with CryptoMat, it actually um, lets me isolate each one of those things. Let me verify that that's it. Crypto object. Where are you at here? Well, I guess it is it. It's just showing up weird today. It wasn't showing up like that before, I don't think. Um, Okay, with this, <clears throat> I downloaded a plugin called CryptoMat for Maya. I installed it, and then it let me do a crypto object uh, mask. And then <coughs> <coughs> I downloaded the Nuke version of it. There it goes. Um, and then the Nuke version allows me to basically go through and pick specific objects. So I click on this picker, <coughs> and then I could pick like the screen. And then I'm going to say uh, mat only, and there it is. So I've isolated just the screen in this case. So any object that I have inside of 3D, I now can create a mask for it right here simply by doing this, simply by clicking on this picker. And it actually pulls up those items based off of their name. Remove that, mat only. Let's grab this button, and there it is, okay? So very quickly, I can, I can select all these things, and it works with motion blur. So if I had motion blur on this thing as it's moving, it would also pick up the motion blur. Uh, it's amazing what it does. Uh, this is also available for uh, After Effects too, so if you want to use it with After Effects, and I think Photoshop as well, okay? So, uh, well, in Maya is where I had to download it and install it so that I could create the masks. Let me show that. Stop going down so far. Uh, oh, I've already added it probably. Yeah, there it is. So I added crypto asset, crypto material, and crypto object. And these are all basically, <clears throat> if I do it to object, I can select any, uh, any object that's in there. If I do it to material, anything with the same material on it will get it. And if I do it to asset, it's something different. Um, Maybe the faces or something. I don't remember. Uh, object worked perfect, so I just use object. Okay. So that's what we're going to do today is we're going to install CryptoMat for your nuke <coughs> so that you can use that so that we can select stuff and isolate it and then add um, some color adjustments to things. Okay. Um, so if you have nuke open, close nuke because we need to close nuke so that we can install the plugin. <coughs> Uh, I've also put, where is it, one of the modules. I've also created that um, folder, there it is, Dropbox link, so that anything that I do give you, it's going to be in this Dropbox link. <clears throat> now, a, a weird thing happened when I was testing this on the class computers. I basically took my, my uh, uh, plugins or scripts, and I tried installing them, and it wouldn't work. <clears throat> I don't know why it kept giving me an error. 
So then I had to go to the actual website, download it from the original website, and then install it. Now I put it on your, um, I think it's on your Y drive. I think on your Y drive, which is in the computer area, let's see. under 2560, there should be a scripts folder and there should be something called Crypto Mat Master. Nope, I'm going to show you. Okay. You can take the whole folder if you want. That You can just use that for other stuff too because it has all the plugins you need. Like here's Nuke and some other stuff. Um, you're going to go into the Nuke folder <clears throat> and you're going to copy all the stuff that's in the Nuke folder. <coughs> and then you're going to have to paste it into the Nuke plugin folder. Yes, sir. They blocked you out. I'll uh, share it to your computer. What's the number on it? It's in the front right here by the monitor. On computer? Yep, and then 2560. Should be right on your P drive, Noah. <coughs> okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, you either. Okay. What's your computer number? They're not supposed to have a limit to this. Thing, but for whatever reason, there seems to be a limit. Nope, we want to copy the files inside the folder. Yep, so grab all the files and then hit Control A or whatever and Control C to copy it. <coughs> From the Nuke folder, right? From the Nuke folder. And then we're going to paste it. <coughs> On your computers, you're going to go to the C drive. In, yeah, inside the Nuke folder, you can grab all of them. Okay, in the C drive, <coughs> under users, uh, you should have a folder, I think it's R127 or SR127. Mm -hmm. Okay, inside there should be a tilde nuke folder or tilde dot nuke or a dot nuke folder. Yeah, there you go. So open the dot nuke folder and just paste it in there and then open up nuke. The contents of the folder. Oh, it's the one you told me to do, isn't it? Correct. C drive users SR one twenty seven dot nuke. And then just paste it right in there and then open up nuke. You should not get any weird errors. Uh, and you should get this little like purpley icon on the bottom of your of your nuke interface. It's the only one that's colorful in Nuke. <laughs> the very bottom. The one you can't see. <clears throat> you guys gotta tell me these things. There we go. Cool. So I don't know why it didn't work before, because literally I took my plugin that I downloaded originally and just put it on the server, tried installing it, it didn't work. I went back to the website, re-downloaded it. Uh, if you're at home, you do want to try this. <coughs> you would go to Cryptomat uh, Download. That takes you to GitHub. And then here's all the stuff. You would just say Download. And that's that folder. The C drive does get wiped. So when you come in next time, you'll have to do that again. Okay. Correct. Well, every time you, if your computer shuts off, you'd have to do it again. So when you come in next class, you'd have to do it again. We're not going to use that one too often. Like this one will be the main one we use it on. Um, so next class or next assignment, we won't be using it. Okay. Um, this is only for doing this kind of thing where we have a 3D item and we want to tweak what the coloring of specific objects on that 3D item are. All right. <clears throat> cool. Has everyone got it? Going once, going twice. How do you know? Down here in the bottom left, 
you should see that icon. And if you click on it, it should say crypto map. Cool? You don't got it? You could also make your own plugins. You could also make your own tools, whatever you would want to do. <clears throat> you don't need to do this part. Don't do this part because it'll just mess your stuff up. Uh, but I want to show you how certain things can happen um, in the software. So first, uh, you will, yes. You can open it while you're, while it's going or while I'm going. So let's say that we have a file that we're going to continually do the same setup on. So this is my game station. Let's say next week I'm going to come in. I'm going to make something new. I'm going to render out with the same passes. And then I'm going to um, do this same whole setup right here. Okay, let's, like that's my setup every time. <clears throat> Even the color, like let's say everything, like this entire setup here, I'm always going to use that. Or let's say I'm going to give this to someone else and then they're supposed to do it. I can take this entire thing and I can group this together and now that's all locked into this. So when I go into that, somebody just has to load this file, connect it to arrow one, and then everything would still work. Mm -hmm. Control G. Yeah. And then if I wanted to, I can expand that group back out, and then there it goes. Um, it's edit, and then group. It's like something weird like that. Uh, Control G. Nope, that's not it. Well, you made me break it. <clears throat> this is what sucks about all the software, is just knowing all these stupid hotkeys. Node, group, and then expand. Control Alt G, close. Okay. Um, now, this is also a group. If I were to double click it, uh, or no, it's already open, there it is. If I were to go in here, it would actually have like this is the group right there. And so this is basically like input one is number one, input two is number two. So I load in a new project, <clears throat> I connect to number one, I change the color of the background, it works, okay? Um, and then I could even take items that are inside here and make controllers for it in the other one. That way if someone needed to adjust the colors or the um, uh, depth of field or any of that stuff, it could all be like on that main node. So hugely powerful. Uh, Software. Come on. Control Alt G. It's probably a hotkey for something else. It's just not working. Edit. Node. Group. Group. That should work. All right. What does it undo? There we go. Perfect. <laughs> if anything, I go in the other one, copy it, bring it here, paste it. It works. Uh, cool. So now what we need to do is we need to create uh, masks that we will then use. Okay. Just like down here on that glow, we used a mask in order to control where that glow was happening. <clears throat> we need to create these masks so that we could then start implementing them um, anywhere we want to inside this chain. So the best part or the best spot to do any masking is right here at the beginning. Okay. So I'm going to grab, um, you, I'm working like this, obviously, because my uh, screen is so tiny I can't even see it. Uh, I'm going to move these ones up, okay? I'm going to leave some room. This will be the masking area. <clears throat> and then I will have all of these masks copied back into this, and then it'll go on like that, okay? So I'm going to mask over here on the left, feed it back into here, and then pipe it into the rest of it, all right? So I'm going to go to... I guess I can't see my menu from there. Uh, I guess that's fine. I'm just going to hit tab and then do crypto mat. Okay, you can just go down to the crypto mat on the bottom and say crypto mat and that'll pull it up too. Group. There it goes. My nuke is acting funny apparently. Okay, so I'm just going to branch this off to the side just like we did our uh, contact sheet. <clears throat> and then I'm going to view just that crypto mat. Okay. So remember your hotkeys. If you have trouble remembering hotkeys, write them down. But I just hit one so I can see that crypto mat. Mm 
your crypto mat should be connected right to your main read node. Just that crypto map plugin. You don't do that. No, I was just showing you could do that. <clears throat> it's a possible possibility. Okay. So notice how I didn't add a shuffle to this at all. Um, one of the things I forgot is that you don't need to shuffle. The second you add that crypto mat, it knows where's your crypto mat channel. Here we go, and then we can start working on it. Okay. Um, you could even go over here and pick if there were several different selections. You can pick the different selection. I only have one, so that's what it's showing. Okay. Um, so it pulls out the layer, okay? That's what we did down here. We shuffled out each one of those. So I'm gonna take the crypto mat <clears throat> and I need to have basically one for every item I'm going to tweak. So all the buttons are kind of like together. So I'm gonna make one for the buttons uh, here. I'm gonna make one for this big button. I'm gonna make one for the green, one for these back buttons and one for this screen, okay? So every single one of those. The way that I do it is I go to the picker and I you can't just pick, like that's too simple. So <laughs> you have to control click to pick. Right, it's like adding it in there. Oops. Yep, you just go to pick or add and you control click each item you want. So I control click each one of these buttons. If you accidentally add one, go to pick or remove and you can just control click that other button out there, okay, or whatever one you accidentally clicked. Nope, <clears throat> that's just the picker. It's like a weird thing that it does where you can actually, uh, you can actually marquee something or, or pick a pixel and it'll lock that setting in there so that you can play with other stuff on the side. It's pretty neat. Yep, just all the buttons. And then uh, let's name this uh, crypto button so we know which one it is. <clears throat> and we want the mat only. Okay. That way we only get like this is the result of it. And we can verify, yeah, that's the buttons. If we messed up, then obviously we would correct that. Okay. Uh, so that's that one. So let's just uh, make another one right next to it. Yep, another crypto. Connect it di uh, directly to that main re uh, game station. And then this one, we'll call it the big button or something. Crypto big button. Make sure you view it. Usually that's what happens. People forget to view their uh, crypto. crypto screen. And then just keep going down the list, just grabbing the next item on it. So I got one for the big button. I got one for the screen. <clears throat> yep, both bumpers will be together. And you can call them whatever you want. I'm, I'm not concerned with you know you naming it something specific as long as it's a an apparent name. Yes, sir. So, so I'm, I'm clicking the big button, but it's not selected. Are you control clicking it? Oh. I guess it is
Correct. So it's the buttons, big buttons and the buttons? And the screen and the system. Doesn't matter. Once we're done with it, we should just have them as one node all together. So if you do it in one order or the other one, it's not going to matter because they'll all end up being the same thing. And then once you're done with uh, creating those, then you can organize your node graph. All right, so we have a very repetitive process. <clears throat> if you had 10 more of these or 20 more of these, it's going to be the exact same thing, making that crypto and then pulling it out and extracting it so that we can have just that uh, mat. <clears throat> so by the time we're done, we should have basically a mask for each one of these areas. Now, the next step in this is putting all of these together so we can use them. Right now, they're just kind of like available, okay? What I want to be able to do is, um, this is my diffuse down here, okay? Um, let's say that I wanted to adjust the color of this big button. I don't want it to be so orange. Maybe I want to desaturate it some, or maybe I want to oversaturate it. So if I were to <coughs> cough in the middle of a lecture, if I was to put a saturation on this, and then I previewed it, and then I crank the saturation up, you can see how everything gets overly saturated, but I only wanted that to happen to the button, right? So <clears throat> if I drag this arrow, which is the mask arrow, over to the big button, now it only affects the big button. But what do you think is going to happen uh, when I start adding stuff all over the place? it's going to be a huge mess. Our node graph is going to have arrows and lines going all over the place. It's much easier for us if this mask is already kind of like built into that saturation. So all I would have to do is come down here to uh, mask and from this list choose the item that I want. Okay. Now you'll see that it says crypto object red, crypto object zero red, one, two. <clears throat> Those are not the objects. Those are different um, items. Um, so I can't use those. I have to actually go through and save each one of these things into a separate channel. Okay. So down here where we pulled stuff out and we're like um, extracting the channels, then we put them back together. Here I need to make channels and then put them into this, this chain so that they all go along with it. Okay. So um, there's several ways we can do that. We're going to use the same thing we did here just for continuity sake. Copy, right? And everyone remembers the hotkey for copy? K, yep. <laughs> right? So we're going to hit K, <clears throat> and we're going to copy. We're copying this one to that one. Yep. Yeah, the first one you have in your list to the second one you have in your list, whichever order. It doesn't matter. Eventually, they'll all be in the same node. <clears throat> now, do you think that it's going to make sense for us to copy the alpha and replace the alpha? Okay, well, here's what the alpha channel looks like for that one. Here's what the alpha channel looks like for that one. This is what it looks like when they're together. What's that? I want to copy and have both of them, right? <clears throat> but I also want them to be separated, so they can't be under the same channel. So I don't want to copy the alpha into the alpha, because it'll basically like delete the old alpha and put that one on top of it, which is what it did. So what I want to do is copy the alpha into a new channel, just like we did down here. Oh, we didn't do that down here. That was something different. Never mind. Um, you the Correct. That's what it's going to do. It, if, if my order was swapped, it would do the same thing. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to copy the alpha into a new channel. So you click on that. It's a huge list. <clears throat> and you go to new. 
Okay, you click on the second one there, and I'm going to call this mask.button. Sorry, not mask.button, button.mask. Doesn't matter. Oh, you mean what is the name of it? Uh, this is my crypto buttons. Oh, from here? New. Yep. Alpha to button mask. It doesn't matter what you connect inside here, as long as you know which order you, you have this in. These are basically just like a mask, a mask, a mask, and a mask. All I'm going to do is just make sure that I'm feeding these all together at the very end. So when I get to this one, <clears throat> these are the buttons. They're getting copied onto the next one on the list. And this name is for that name of that layer. OK? Buttons dot mask. Buttons dot mask. Oh. It needs the dot in there to separate it. <clears throat> so I, I renamed mine small buttons uh, mask. There we go. OK. So now what that's going to give me is from my big list of things here, I should have one called small buttons or button. I don't know why it just didn't give me it. Whatever. No, it didn't. Why are these small buttons? All right. I'm going to switch my viewer. My nuke is acting very uh, odd. It doesn't like me. Uh, let's just, I'm going to save this and just reopen it real quick. So essentially what this is doing is it's saying, okay, I'm going to copy this alpha channel and I want you to put it onto this file as a mask. Okay. In this case, we're actually going to be doing that several times. <clears throat> so you'll see, maybe if I show you the end result, you can see it a little bit better. So here we did the alpha to the button mask. And then the next one, we're going to copy button mask to button mask in red, or alpha doesn't matter, to mask. And then the next one, we're going to grab them all. And then the next one, we're going to grab them all. Okay, so you'll see how we add all these together to get all the masks as one thing so that we can basically like go through and pick each one of those that we want. Right, pick the masks individually. Okay, so I'm just going to do the same process again. I'm going to do another copy, A and B. And I need to copy the alpha to a new one. And whatever the alpha is, that's my new one. So this is going to be uh, big button dot mask. <clears throat> Whatever the B is, correct. No, 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 just whatever you want. Like the B here is called, is crypto big button. So I just call mine big button dot mask. All right, so I've copied uh, the alpha into big button mask. That's the next one. Now, as I'm going, I'm going to look at each one of these. So I'm going to go to the first one that I did. And I'm going to make sure that my small buttons are in here. Where are my buttons at? That's why we're checking. Why are my small buttons? Other layers. I think my screen might be cutting it off. It's not. Uh, oh, wait. Okay, so at the very top here where this says RGBA <clears throat> and then it says small button mask, um, I can verify that my small buttons are right here. There they are. So, nope, you got to go to the next menu over. This one here is um, not where you would be. Sometimes it'll show up in there, but it's not showing up in there. 
Yeah, that's fine. Yours is the bumper is your first one, right? Yeah, so yours is going to be whatever your first one was. When I go to the second one, my small buttons is now gone. Okay? If I go into this list, I can see big button. Come on. Big button. There it is. Um, but my small button is no longer listed. If I even look for it, it's gone. So what's happening here is it's copying the one into the next one, but deleting everything else. So this one here, <clears throat> the first one creates the small button mask. The second one deletes the small button mask and adds the big button mask. So what I need to do is make sure that the small button is also going with it. So the first one should just have the one at the top. The second one is going to have the RGB alpha to the big mask, and then it should also have small button mask to small button mask. If I can find my small button mask. There it is. I couldn't find it. The next one is just going to make sure that we copied the alpha to the mask, the new mask, <clears throat> and then the old one to the old one. So now I should have small button mask right there and big button mask right there. Yeah, small buttons to small buttons or bumper to bumper or whatever it is. Whatever your first one was, make sure it's in the second one too. And when I do all my other copies, it's going to be the same exact setup. I'm going to say copy the alpha to whatever my new thing is. Screen.mask. Yes. And then big button will go to big button. And then small button will go to small button. Yep, I'll be in a sec. Copy number two is just alpha to buttons. Every one of these copies should have another line to it. All right, it's exhausting, right? <laughs> All right, so there is obviously a, a little bit of a difference between 11.3 and 11.2 in these air, uh, things up here. Um, I should be able to go here and say big button and see big button, but for whatever reason on mine, it's not showing up. <clears throat> but on yours, it does show up by using that first one in the list, okay? Uh, and that's the whole idea with this is that we are able to isolate all these things as separate masks, as separate layers that we could then utilize uh, later on, okay? So uh, what we need to do is copy all of this stuff into this one here. Now you may have noticed that we ran out of space, right? Um, so we may have to do uh, a double copy here. I may have to disconnect this one and then drag it into this. and then copy that last one separately. Uh, yep, you should have one for the screen too. So this is, let's make sure this works first. Yes. Okay. So if I go here, <coughs> I should be able to look through here and say there's the bumpers, 
There's the big button. There's the button, yes. And there's the screen, cool. Okay, so here's how I set it up. That very last one, because we had four things, we actually needed to add one more five things into this list, so I just connected it differently. My last one is gonna be a direct copy right into this chain, and then my other one is just gonna be right there. Okay, so I'll show you what that looks like again. Nope, I just disconnected this, drug this over the chain, so see how it just pops right in? All the stuff still works, I don't have to touch that again. Then I clicked off and just made a brand new one. Okay, and then connected this here and then drug that over. And that's my bumper. That should be alpha to bumper right there. For me, for me, for my last one is bumper, so that's the bumper for it. All right, so this is uh, just a progression of, of how this stuff gets set up. And again, once you have something like, like this set up, it's simply a matter of just changing that initial file like this and then updating all this other stuff. Now down here, <clears throat> typically all your layers are gonna be named the same. Ambient occlusion is always gonna be called ambient occlusion. Diffuse will always be, be called diffuse. Uh, when you're up here and we're doing these things where we're actually selecting things, we're naming things, that's where things would get a little bit trickier, a little bit different. Um, so one area we have something that can be very automated, very easy. The other one, it's a little bit trickier. That's where uh, people who do like new coding would come in because they could actually feed whatever that name is, could automatically feed whatever the names of those, those masks are. Okay, so um, pretty cool. So now what we should be able to do is, like I said, access any of these things. There's big button. There's bumper, it's working now, it didn't work a minute ago. There's my other buttons, there's screen, and so we can see all these things. And then obviously the real test for this is once we get to the very end, so if I look at the very, very end of this and I look at buttons, you can see they're still there. Same thing with big button, they're still there, and same thing with screen and all the other ones, they're all still there. So these masks <coughs> carried through this entire animation from where we created them right to this very end spot, okay? So now we're at the point of, now we can actually use the masks. <laughs> so all of that, the first two hours of class was just setting up the masks for us to use them. So let's look at uh, all of these different passes here <clears throat> and let's see where we might wanna use one of those masks, okay? So um, Let's say I want to adjust the coloring of this. Which one of these passes here uh, will I be adjusting the color on? So there's specular, there's coat, transmission, and diffuse. I want to adjust the color of the, of the stuff. You have a one in four choice here. <laughs> diffuse, perfect, it's diffuse, okay? Diffuse is your main color, that would be the spot we would want to do that on. If I started to go into, let's say, specular, and I, I changed the color, I gave it a drastic color shift, then that means that all of my highlights are now a different color, and that would look weird, right? So uh, I wouldn't want to do that in this case. Now, let's say that I wanted to make my um, reflection a bit uh, brighter. Where would I do that? Let's see, AO, AO is wrong. Where is our reflection happening? <clears throat> two spots, these two, right? So it'll all depend on where we want or what kind of reflection we want to be adjusting, okay? So let's say in, in this case, I want to adjust it on specular. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add a grade node in right here under specular. Now you, I say it uh, when I'm, I'm going through stuff, but this is why I say it. <clears throat> if we're way over here and I come down here and I think I'm gonna add a grade node or whatever node and I hit G, what happens is I hit G and nothing happens. So I hit it again and again and again and nothing happens and then I hold my hand up and start looking at my phone. And then the teacher comes over and he clicks G and it works and says, okay, cool. And then I look way back over here <laughs> 
and I have this mess of grade nodes that I've added, okay? So anytime you're adding any nodes, until you're comfortable with it and are aware that, hey, I may not have the right thing selected, it's always best to just click off of it and then hit that hotkey, okay? The other thing to keep in mind, too, is this property panel. <clears throat> you may have already caught this. If you single click on these, it doesn't show that one in the property panel. You have to double click it and then it brings it to the top, okay? So it's very easy again to, if I had a grade node here and a grade node there and a grade node somewhere else, that I'm changing something that I may not want to be changing. Um, for instance, let's say I have a grade node here and then I added a grade node here. Okay, I'm gonna close these so we can see it and then accidentally add that one. So I click on grade two and I start changing this and I say, this isn't doing anything, this is stupid. And then I go and look at the end result <clears throat> and holy cow, it just exploded. That's because I'm changing that grade node, right? So you have to be aware of where you're at in the scene. So just be aware of that. If you find you're getting confused with the properties, like I wanna make sure I'm always selected on the, the one that I'm working on, set this to one and then just get in the habit of double clicking every time you want to change something. Because if I'm here and I add a grade node and then I double click this, it gets rid of the other stuff in that properties and just shows me that last one. Okay, so that's just a, a handy thing. All right, so let's go to uh, specular <clears throat> and we'll add a grade node in there and make sure you preview the grade nodes. You can see it, right? So just hit G to add a grade node and then look through the grade node, drop it into that chain. And you can do that by just moving that node right on top of the line, it should drop in. If it doesn't, deselect, grab the grade node again and drop it on it. Yes, sir. Correct. <clears throat> so I just added that grade node in there, and on mine I just went and took the white point up to, or down to 0 0.08. So now what I want to do is limit it to just the console itself, nothing else in the scene, just the console. So how am I going to do that? Right, go to mask, and then just pick it from the list. Are you viewing it? You can after, but just focus on one uh, one thing at a time, right? The one thing, uh, uh, when I, I see, I hit uh, L on the mask here, and then it names the buttons, all the buttons on the screen, and I get a tick heading in the red screen. Mm -hmm. That's what I did. Yeah, well, that's, 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 that's fine. Yeah. And then what I'm going to do, after I've played with the grade, <clears throat> I've added the system mask, so it's only affecting that system mask. I went to the end of it where all these things come together and I'm viewing that. Then I can click on this grade node and just hit D, D, D and see the before and after of it. Okay, so I can see, am I liking the results of it? Here, the buttons kind of get lost. There, the buttons pop a little bit more, having a bit more contrast in there. Yeah, try either one of them. The idea with this is just to kind of look at how Nuke is doing some of its stuff. Once we have this set up, we should be able to just go in there and kind of screw around. Um, <clears throat> even your grade node, if I drop a grade node on my diffuse, remember uh, we did this, I think, last time. Those color wheels that are there can open up and you can change the color based off of that too. So if I go in here to, um, let's say to gain and I click the color wheel, I can add more red into my game system, or I can add more blue and take out the red. Okay, and then again, using that mask, I can isolate it to just whatever areas I need. Now in the same area too, you might have like one grade for the screen, one grade for the system, one grade for the buttons, one grade for the bumper, that's fine, but just, get in there and start playing with the, the different settings and see. 
if one of them is too complicated, like uh, Hugh Correct <laughs> is like a crazy looking one, um, then just delete it, okay? Don't worry about Hugh Correct now. We'll get into more of those, what they mean. <clears throat> use Grade, that's a definite for sure, easy one. Uh, or use Hue Shift, that's an easy one, okay?